This is example number four in the steel design for simple, simple bolted connections. And the connection details we have are we're using 7 8 inch diameter A325 bolts with threads in shear plane. Slip is not permitted and the material type for both gusset and tension member, gusset plate and tension member is A36 steel. And we're asked to calculate, the, uh, compute the strength of the connection per LRFD and ASD. And here is just a complete figure. Uh, we have a half inch gusset plate, 5 eighths inch by 6.75 inch uh, plate in tension. And we have these different dimensions from the edge of the plate to the center of the hole. Uh, bolt holes is 1.75 inches and from center of hole to center of hole is 3.25 inches. And on the lower right corner I've drawn out um, a couple of different blocks. One is, uh, uh, these are for, uh, we'll use these later, but just so you know what they are. It's just a block shear, uh, block shear tear out, if it was to tear out for the gusset plate and the, and the tension member. So for the gusset plate, This is for the gusset plate. And this is for the tension member. Um, so we'll cover this more when we get to the calculating the block shear strength. So the first thing we need to do is look at bolt shear. And the nominal bolt shear is equal to F sub N V times A sub B, which is the which is the nominal stress of the fastener. Multiply that by the cross sectional area of the fast of the bolt. Nominal stress of the bolt times the cross sectional area of the bolt. So the F sub N V we can find in table J table J three dot two. So we're dealing with uh, a325 bolts and the uh, and the threads are uh, are included in the shear plane so if you look in that table it's going to be 48 ksi is a nominal stress and then we multiply that by pi times 7 8 inch which is a diameter squared and divide that by 4 and this gives us the nominal strength for each bolt is 28.86 inches 28.86 kips per bolt is a nominal shear strength so since we have four bolts, we need to multiply that by four, and the total nominal bolt shear strength uh, is 115.45 kips. Next thing we'll look at is slip critical strength, and this is based on AISC J3.8. So um, the equation uh, for slip critical strength is equation uh, J3-4 and this is all based on AISC the 13th edition J3-4 equation uh, so we have a connection with standard holes uh, um, so we're gonna design uh, for slip as a serviceability uh, limit state and so the formula here is mu times d sub u times h sub sc times t sub, sub b times n sub s. So mu is a mean slip coefficient for class A or B surfaces. And uh, it, has two, it can either be 0 0.35 for class A surfaces, surfaces or 0 0.5 for class B. So class A is unpainted clean mill scale steel surface or surface with class A coatings. So this is our case. So it's 0 0.35, and then D sub U is um, 1.13, and this is just a multiplier that reflects the ratio of the mean installed bolt pretension to the specified minimum bolt pretension. And then H sub SC is a hole factor, and since we were just using standard holes, it's just going to be 1.0. And then T sub B is the uh, minimum uh, bolt pretension, and that can be found in in table J3.1 table J3.1 
and so we have seven eighths, seven eighth inch uh, diameter hole. So eight three twenty five bolts. So it's thirty nine kips, and then n sub s is the number of shear planes. So in our case, in our case, it's just uh, one shear plane for the bolt. And we just plug in the numbers, and we get 15.42 kips per bolt. And since we have four bolts, we multiply that by four, and we get the slip critical strength is 61.7 kips. The next thing we'll look at is bearing. And so for bearing, um, since both the edge distances are the same and the gusset plate is uh, thinner than the tension member, the gusset plate uh, thickness will be used. So, first thing we need to do is calculate the hole diameter, and the hole diameter is equal to the bolt diameter uh, plus 1 16 inch. So, it's 7 8 inch plus 1 16 inch equals 15 16 inch, 15 16 inch. And then we'll take a look at the edge holes first. So, going back to the figure. So what we're looking at is the gusset plate and the edge holes. Let me just label these holes A, B, C, D. So we'll first look at uh, holes C and D. These are the edge holes. And what we need to find is a clear distance, which is here, clear distance between the edge of uh, hole C and D and the edge of the gusset plate. We'll call this LC um, sub CD because it refers to whole CD. So we know the distance from the edge of the gusset plate to the center of the hole is 1.75 inches and that's LE. So we can calculate uh, LC by just taking LE minus H over 2. So going back to the bearing, so we have LE minus H over 2 LE H over 2. So 1.75 inches minus 15 16 inch divided by 2. And this gives us 1.28 inches as our clear distance from the edge holes to the edge of the gusset plate. And then we plug in uh, this L sub C into the equation um, J3 6A for bearing. J3 dash 6a. So 1.2 times LC, which is 1.28, uh, times the thickness of the gusset plate, which is half inch, times the ultimate strength, so 836 steel, so we have 58 KSI, and this gives us 44.59 kips. So we calculated the if you look in the equation it's it's an equation but then but then it's also an inequality so we calculated the left hand side now we need to calculate the right hand side um, this, which is the upper limit so 2.4 times the bolt diameter which is 7 8 inch times uh, the thickness t which is a gusset plate thickness and then times fu f sub u which is 58 ksi so this gives us 60.9 kips is our upper limit. And this is greater than 44.59 kips, so we use a smaller value. So we'll use 44.59. So we got those two holes out of the way. Now we got to look at the, the other two holes, the holes A and B. So if we go back. So if we're looking now, we're looking at holes A and B, and we need to we need to find the clear distance between the edge of these holes. This is the other clear distance we're looking for, L sub C, and we just put A B. So we need to find the clear distance between holes A C or holes B D, whichever you like. So we know the, uh, the center to center distance is 3.25 inches, and we typically label that as S. So 3.25 inches here, that's S. And we need to subtract the H over 2 and then multiply by 2 since we have two holes. Um, so, so we have L sub C equals S minus H. And this H uh, is basically the same thing as saying 2 times H over 2. Since we have two holes, um, 
since we have a hole here and a hole here, so we're just taking half the hole and half the hole and adding that up. So 3.25 inches minus h, which is 15 sixteenths inch, this gives us L sub c is 2.31 inches. And again, we just put this value into the, into the equation J3 dash 6A. Equation J3 dash 6A. And we get uh, 80.48 kips. And let me just double check that uh, 1.2. Okay. Okay, 1.2 times 2.31 times the thickness, which is 0 0.5 times 58. Yeah, that's 8 point. Yeah. So then we look at the upper limit now. And we compare this value to the upper limit. And we don't need to recalculate the upper limit. That's going to be the same because that's independent of L sub C. And that's 60.9. So the upper limit, the 60.9, is less than 80.48. So in this case, we'll use 60.9. We have to use a smaller value. So the total bearing strength is e going to be equal to 2 times the bearing strength of the edge holes plus 2 times the bearing strength of the other two holes. Edge holes, farther, farther holes. So this gives us a total bearing strength of 210.98 kips. After looking at bearing, we'll take a look at the tensile st uh, strength on the gross area. And we're, we're in particular looking at the, tension, the plate intention. So the formula for calculating the nominal tensile strength is equal to the yield strength multiplied by the gross cross-sectional area. So the yield strength is 36 KSI, and the gross cross-sectional area for this plate is um, 5 eighths. So this is 5 eighths by 6.75 inch. So we just multiply those two values. 5 eighth inch uh, multiplied by 6.75 inches. Yeah, so we have 36 KSI multiplied by uh, 6.75 inches is the width, and this is the thickness. This is width. This is the thickness. And this gives us a nominal tensile strength of 151.88 kips. So after tensiles uh, uh, the, on gross area, we need to look at the tensile strength on the net area. And for this, we need to calculate the whole diameter. And in this scenario, we're going to add 1 8 inch instead of 1 16 inch. This is typically the standard. Uh, this is typically what we add when checking these tension members is 1 8 inch. I know in bearing, we just added 1 16 inch. But we should do 1 8 inch when checking this tensile uh, strength. So we just do 7 8 inch, which is a bolt diameter, plus 1 8 inch. So h is equal to 1 inch. And so, since all elements of the cross section are connected, uh, shear lag is not going to be a factor in this scenario. So AE is equal to AN in this case. And then the formula for the uh, for this rupture tensile on net area is going to be F sub U times the effective area. And well, simplifying that further, F sub U times the thickness times the gross width minus the summation of the holes, uh, bolt holes. So if we look, um, F sub U is 58 KSI. The thickness is 5 eighths inch. And the gross width is 6.75 inches. And we have minus. And if you take a cut at the cross section going back to the figure, so if we just take a cut here, let's say we take a cut here, we encounter two holes. So 6.75 is the width, and then we have to subtract two times the uh, hole diameters. Okay, so, so where are they? So we have 6.75 inches minus two is the number of holes, number of holes in that plane. Uh, in the cross section and multiply it by h is one inch. So this gives us um, 
the nominal strength in this case is 172.19 kips. You can say this is the nominal tensile rupture strength. And lastly, we'll look at block shear strength. And so the failure block for both the gusset plate uh, has the same dimensions as a, as a block for the tension member, except for the thickness. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the question, I drew out the, the failure block for the gusset, and, gusset plate and tension member. So you can see the dimensions are the same. And so in that case, the thinner member will be the controlling member. So the gusset plate will control. And this is the shear plane. And this is the shear plane here. And here over, um, let's just label these corners. Um, one, two, or better yet, let's just label it with letters. Okay, so already using A, B, C, D, so E, F, E, F, um, G, H. So this is how we'll uh, label, uh, label our corners. So first we need to calculate the shear areas, the gross shear area and the net shear area. So the shear will be occurring along edges EF and GH, and they're both the same dimensions. So if we go back, so our shear area is going to be equal to the thickness of the gusset plate multiplied by the length of the shear plane. And we're talking about the gross shear area, so we don't have to take into account the holes at this point. So it's 3.25 plus 1.75. We just add those, that's the length. When we add those, that's the length of our shear plane. And to get the shear area, we multiply that by the thickness of the gusset plate. So we go back. Okay, I think I skipped forward one second. So now we calculate the gross shear. We're looking at block shear, and we calculate the gross shear area. So since we have two sh uh, sh shear of planes, we, this is the number of shear planes. Number of shear planes. And then the thickness uh, of the gusset plate, thickness, T. And then this is the length. This is the length of the shear plane length of shear plane. So 2 times 1 half times 3.25 plus 1.75 inches and this gross shear area is 5 inches squared. Now that we have the gross shear area we need to calculate the net shear area and it's going to be similar to the gross shear area but in this case we'll take the, the, the length and we need to um, we need to subtract the whole the whole contribution from it so so we have two number of shear planes times half inch is the thickness, and then 3.25 plus 1.75, and then a 1.5 is a number of holes, and we'll go back to the figure, number of holes. If we go back to the figure. So if we look in this, in the shear, uh, if we look at edge EF over here, edge EF, the we encounter one hole, one hole, complete hole, and then the hole at E, we take half of that, so it's one plus half, so 1.5 holes. So we have to subtract that diameter, 1.5 times the hole diameter. So that's what we have, 1.5. 1.5 times the hole diameter, H, and this gives us 3.5 inches squared. And then we need to calculate the net tension area. So the net tension area is going to be, if we go back to the block shear, shear block, the failure block, the, to calculate the net tension area, tension will be occurring along the plane FH, right? Since EF and GH are, are experience shear, 
um, the tension will be on FH. So to get that area, we just take the length of FH and then we multiply that by the thickness of the gusset plate. So we go back to calculating the net tension area. So here we have um, here we have the thickness of the this is the thickness of the gusset plate this is the length uh, FH and then we subtract the holes since we have um, one hole on each end one hole at F and one hole at H we take half of each hole so two times two times H over two so that just gives us H so 3.25 inches minus one inch and that gives us 1.13 inches squared is our net tension area. Once we have those values, we just plug it, uh, plug it into the equation from lock shear, and that's in let's see, block shear. Block shear is in section J4.3, uh, this equation, J4.3, and it's equation J4-5 in the AISC specification manual. So the equation is 0 0.6 times F sub U times the net shear area plus U sub BS times F sub U, ultimate strength, times the net tension area. We just plug in the numbers. So it's 0 0.6 times 58 KSI times the net shear area, which is 3.5 inches squared, plus U sub BS. So in our case, since it's occurring in a gusset plate, U sub BS is equal to 1.0 because the stress is uniform. So that's why it indicates uniform stress. Uniform stress. Then multiply that by the ultimate strength, 58 KSI, and then multiply that by the net tension area, which is 1.13 inches squared. And this gives us a nominal strength of 187.05. So if you look in the equation, we just calculated the left-hand side of the... Uh, there, it's an equation, but also an inequality. So we calculated the left-hand side of the inequality, and now we need to check if it's less than or equal to this upper limit. And the upper limit is 0 0.6 times... The yield strength, which is 36 KSI, times the gross shear area, which is 5 inches squared, plus U sub BS, which is 1, times the ultimate strength, which is 58 KSI, times the net tension area, which is 1.13 inches squared. And this upper limit is 173.25, so which is smaller than the left-hand side of the inequality. So in this case, we have to use a smaller value. So we'll use 173.25 kips as our nominal is our nominal strength for block shear. Now, once we have all those values, once we got, once we got, once we did bolt shear and then the slip critical and bearing and tension on the gross area, tension on the net area, and block shear, now all we need to do is uh, go go through the LRFD and ASD formulations. Just either multiply multiply by resistance factor or divided by some type of allowable factor. So first we'll do LRFD. So bolt shear is going to be 0 0.75, which is the, the resist resistance factor, times the bolt shear strength, which is 115.45. So this gives us 86.59 kips. It's our bolt shear strength, design strength. For a slip critical, since we're designing for serviceability, the resistance factor is just 1. So it's 61.7 kips is our design strength. Bearing, the resistance factor is 0 0.75, so uh, 0 0.75 times 210.98 kips, which is a nominal bearing strength. This gives us 158.23 kips is our design bearing strength. Tension on gross area, uh, it's 0 0.9 is the resistance factor times 151.88 kips is, our, is the nominal strength we got. So this gives us a this gives us tensile strength on the gross area of 136.69 kips. 
and then tens, uh, tension on the net area, the resistance factor is 0 0.75, and then the strength is 172.19 kips, so this gives us 129, excuse me, oh, sorry about that. Um, so tension on net area, 172.19 times this resistance factor, so we get 129.14 kips. And lastly is block shear strength. The resistance factor is 0 0.75 uh, times the nominal strength, which is 173.25 kips. So this gives us a design block shear strength of 129.94 kips. And now to get the final design strength, we just compare all these uh, six values, I believe. Yeah, six values, and see which one is the smallest. So we have 86, 61, 158, 136. So it looks like uh, 61.7, which is the slip critical strength. That's the smallest value for, um, for this case. So design strength is 61.7 kips, and slip critical is a controlling case for LRFD. ASD, we just take the similar approach. All the nominal strengths will be the same as we did for LRFD, but now we're just dividing. Instead of multiplying by a resistance factor, we're dividing by an allowable factor. So bolt shear, allowable factor is 2. When you work that out, 57.73 kips is bolt shear strength, allowable strength. Slip critical, since we're designing for serviceability limit state, um, we get uh, the factor is 1.5, so the strength is 41.13 kips. Bearing, the nominal strength divided by factor is 2, so 2 10.98 divided by 2, so that's 105.49 kips. Tension on gross area, the factor is um, 0 0.6, or if you want to divide by 5, divided by 3, so 151.88 divided by 5 over 3, so that gives us 91.13 kips. And then tension on net area, the factor is 2, so 172.19 kips divided by 2. This gives us 86.09 kips. And then block shear is 173.25 kips. It's a nominal divided by the allowable factor of 2. And this gives us 86.63 kips. So again, we look at all these six values and determine which one is the smallest one. So we can see that, um, let's see. We have 57, 41, 105, so it looks like 41 is the smallest one. So again, slip critical controls in this case also. And this is the end of example number uh, four in the steel design for, for, uh, for simply bolted connections. Uh, if you can't, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and visit our website at engineeringexamples.net. And please don't forget to check out our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash engineeringexamples. Thanks.